What's up, guys? Pittsburgh Weishwartz back again. Uh, we're here with Fujimi. Uh, we're going to do blue today. We're actually going to save red for the last color this time because it's probably the spiciest color. Um, so today we have uh, with me Andy, Brian, Drew, and you guys have met Billy before. He was on one of our, um, what is it? Our, uh, what are they called? Commentaries? Match okay. commentaries? Mm -hmm. um, and Billy bought a case of this set. <laughs> so um, we wanted to make sure we yeah. got him on. Uh, big DXD fan, right? Oh, yeah. All right. So, jumping right into blue, Andy, tell us about this, uh, Shizuka. All right. We got... Oh, is my mic on? Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this Shizuka, when your character's trigger check reveals a climax card, she's one of your characters. They get a thousand power for the turn. Brainstorm, rest one, flip this over. Search for that many... Bunkos or novel characters. Dude, whenever we do these videos, I'm always the first name and I always get stuck with the fucking brainstormer. Every time. It's always like it's always blue and it's always the same thing. Yeah, you were you were blessed with going first, Andy. That's your blessing. I was blessed with being born with a first name. It starts with A. So for context, this set is lucky enough to have not only a self tap search, but also a self tap salvage. So you have the option. Mm-hmm. You can run a split of both of them if you'd like. And you can, and you can play it in your uh, your novel trait deck. Yeah, because if my sister, my writer, gets a white set, I quit this game. <laughs> no, you go all Is that like a show. You oh it. my god, it's like the worst show ever. <laughs> the light novel art's pretty cute, but like the show, it's was garbage. Uh, pretty we... cute, huh? I, looks I think like, looks like Lollicon to me. Karn. Yeah, whatever. Um, anyway, I wouldn't say that Drew's in the chat. Jeez, um, He's gonna get arrested. What do we think about the first effect? In general. So as a uh, um, love life sunshine main now, <laughs> um, and playing with Hanamaru, brainstormer, it's kind of like a useful effect. Being able to just like, if if you need to get power in like a certain lane, you can just swing with that lane last, and you know maybe you get a uh, some extra power. You do just sack out lanes with this sometimes. It feels really mm -hmm. good. It's notable that like this is probably the set that needs random bursts of power the least. Yeah, for sure. Um, since it's such a board-based set. Um, but it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. It's still tough search. I'll give it, like, A-. minus. That's a good card, yeah. Yeah. I'm not as big of a fan of Trigger. But... <laughs> I mean, self-tap searchers are always, like, A's, but, like, how does the first effect compare to, like, other self-tap Oh, it's, it's strictly you know worse. I mean? That's why I gave it in the negative. Yeah. Strictly worse than what? I, I mean, in the context Just of the do. set, I think it's worse because they don't need the random power spike. Where in Sunshine, it's really good because mm -hmm. some of your stuff is smaller. Oh, uh, because Fa Fantasia Bunko is a very uh, standby heavy yeah, 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 set, yeah. correct? Yeah. Eight, yeah. They're okay. the, the poster child for eight standby. Big boy set. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's not much to say about a self tap search brainstorm. Uh, the yeah. the one the one thing I guess that I would touch on it is um, I've come around to this recently. The thing with search brainstormers is like, in four cards, if you need to grab a one of, like, there's actually such an inordinately high chance that you fuck yourself over with it. Oh yeah. Like. Salvage brainstorms, you at least know what's in your grave. These are better, like, on a fresh refresh if you need a plus, but you probably don't want to mill on a fresh refresh anyway. I don't know, just things to think about. I feel like yeah. people don't mention that kind of stuff enough. Yeah, I guess the, the big benefit of a search brainstorm is that you uh, you compress yourself while uh, while plusing. Right. That being said, you if you need to... search your deck for anything. If you need to fix yeah. yourself for blue, um, go right ahead, King. You this know? is fine, yeah. yeah. My, my sister, my brainstorm. Oh, Which one? What color is the other brainstormer? Red. Uh, okay. Yeah, and it has a climax combo with a standby, like a, one of the stand climax. It only stands one of two different cards though, which is a little weird. But all right, I guess we'll move on. Uh, Brian, tell us about this. Uh, what is that? This is Sistine, right? Yeah, we have Sistine, passion for magical talent. Uh, when this card is reversed in battle, reveal up to three cards from the top of your deck. Choose a Fantasia Bunko or Magic trait character from among them, put it into your hand, and then discard one. Uh, instant four of in standby. In standby, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a hundred percent. It's free mill. It's more even more free mill in a set that has that dumb 
That dumb yellow card. It's a double rare. Well, Andy, you missed the yellow card. So they have a yellow card that when you play a Climax, you get to clock yourself, check top four, add a level one or higher, the rest go to waiting room before you resolve your standby. Bingo. So, like, set more wow. targets, yeah. yeah. Or possibly rocket yourself to one to standby level two. Now it goes off before the uh before the standby. Yeah, so this is like even more mill. Like you feel you shit this out on turn zero, mill some stuff, then go for it. After your I, I kind of like these type of cards in standby decks because if you get stuck with the you know the card you want to stand by in your hand, yeah. you have like a, an outlet right. to discard it. Exactly. The ditch out uh, on reverse reses in general. I. I like, comparatively, this is a really good one because it's just 2-5 because this is its only effect. And, like, 2-5 is basically the new vanilla. Yeah, 2-5 is basically an oversize. Okay, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but... Dude, in 2021, 1500 is basically an oversize. Well, it's funny. All the other on reverse Rizes, like, have these other effects that give them power negatives. But this one, I think, is better because it doesn't have a power negative. It doesn't have the secondary effect. Yeah, yeah. it think, just sits there. Yep. I don't know for for an on reverse Rize, I, I think I'm I think I'm gonna slap. I'm gonna give it the A minus. Uh, but if you're running standby, this is this is a S plus like S I'll auto an a. Yeah. or I want to go S like A plus if you're in standby. I guess. Yeah. I think in, I think in context of the set, it's a A plus. Yeah, I, I'm trying like, to think. In, in standby decks, this is like a. Well, I'm four. also trying nice to game. think. In what deck would you not run blue? Maybe it's just a plus in general. I think you run this in every deck that you would need blue in, and I think most decks are in blue a little bit, if at least for the top end. It's... I mean, you got a search brainstormer. You got this Riza. We could just end the video now. Blue's okay. gr blue's busted. All right, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> yeah. Akashic no, Records. It's... Dear God, these I, these I... fucking school uniforms, dude. I think it's actually quite nice too on this Discord. Uh, it's a nice um, climax stitch at the end of the first deck or at any point. That's also nice. Utilizing yeah, being, able to, being able to filter better refresh out of your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Works on your works in your standard magic deck. Kind of suba. Yeah. It well, is white side. It is white side. Damn. Oof. Chiri and Sistine. Damn. Um, dude, fuck these fucking school uniforms. Dude, Good she looks I... like a Conti girl. She like. Good thing I was fucking. Like a boat girl. I was so blasted cat watching ears. that show. She's got no boat. No boat. No boat. She just sinks. She just sinks. <laughs> well, she, she's she's a cat. Boats don't like the water. She's not a or cat. That's a that is a hair band. Boats hate the water. Sistine is not a cat. That's a hair. That's a hair band. All yeah, right. Well, she needs to take it out then. All right. Next. Then she can go in the water. Oh, thanks. Can... Thank you. You get the. Good one. Why Thank does my you, say I didn't put that in there. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, so we got this Karumi. This is like the non-standby like finisher of choice. Like if you're running a more traditional deck. Um, so okay, so what does it do? When you play this from hand, uh, or what? When you play this from hand or library to stage, Whoa. you may pay cost. Okay, so search your library for one of this card. Place it on the start of the stage. Shuffle your library. So if you have four stock, you can play three of these. If there's two additional ones in your deck. Or, yeah, for four. Yep. Climax combo. Yep. Win this attacks if you have the pants in your climax zone. Perform the following action. So this is the wonky part. Uh, if there are two less cards in your clock, choose one card in your waiting room, return it to your hand, and then shuffle your library. No, right. return to your, your library. library. Oh, wait. Yeah. Choose one card in your waiting room, return it to your library, shuffle your library. You're right. Um, if you have three or more cards in your clock, your opponent moves the bottom four cards of their library to the waiting room. I see two. You'll X your opponent, and this gains 3k power for the turn. Um, so yeah, so you Icy Tail if you have three or more. Uh, or you... Um, you press harder. You can press harder if you're two or less. And for four stock, and or this effect is free, yeah. for four stock in the climax, you'll do whatever that effect is three times fairly consistently. I think that's an important thing to keep in mind with this card. Also, yeah, you this card, um, if you pull this shit in English, it's probably a $500 SP. I think it's like four hundred fifty dollars in JP. So everyone loves Karumi. She invented cringy anime heterochromia, and she has a gun, so I love her. We do love the uh, the, the clock eye. <laughs> we love the clock eye. They don't shit talk Kur Kurumi. She's a she's a cool Never. character. She's a good character. 
All right. So what do we think? I, I again, I, I think the important thing to keep in mind is that for four stock, you will get three instances of this effect. Yeah, and it also does everything you want to do at level three. So I mean, if you're if you've got four stock and you play three of these, you're compressing for the. You know what I mean? For the first, is this a is this a one k one or is a one k one? Yes. Yeah, it's a pants. I mean, you can't control what effect you're doing. You you can. I mean, you have to have some clock yeah. manipulation, and I'm sure that the uh, Kurami deck it, does, considering the really context of the play. show and the character. Uh, the only card, well, not in this set, maybe in the mono, it may be in the actual data live set that's coming, that will exist. But in this specific set, I don't believe there is much. The only way you can increase your clock or decrease your clock is by either healing or by putting a card in your clock in climax phase. Which you can do. There are cards that do that, but you also have to mill to do that too, which you may or may not want to do. So there's ways to go up one or down one. Um, if you have three of this fielded, but like that's still not enough, I don't think. That requires you to be at three two. Two. I don't think you really want to be getting the first effect. No, unless yeah, your you deck is the... hyper hyper compressed. I think you want to be going for the second effect. You want the icy and... tail. It is really nice that it's free. It's really nice that it's on attack, and it's really nice that you, you like are guaranteed to get triple. Yeah, I think the more important part too is the fact that that for four stock you're getting three level threes. They don't do anything outside of this combo, but you know they come from deck. You only need one card in your hand, and you need to make sure they shuffle back. Not a very tall order. I think this is the first time we're getting an icy tail effect in English. Too. Yes. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're gonna we're gonna really see how good um icy tail is in this format because you get triple at every game with this deck. Yeah, if you're at the right clock thing, the clock thing is the part that kills it for me. I think. Otherwise, this card's super sick. Well, good thing I always live at three six. I love. Uh, I think I think it's super good to begin with. Also, considering the standby, like you're probably running standbys at some point. I, I like the climax lineup of four blue gates and four standbys. Because blue gates not only do they salvage you standbys so that you can consistently stand by, but it lets you push damage in a way that an eight standby deck might not, because you can actually slam a climax and push soul. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of like a nice option. I don't know. So, so I think either way you're running like a really nice climax lineup. <clears throat> I just hate that there's no real way to control which effect you do. Yeah, I think that's the uh, that's the biggest downside of this card. But I mean, gen generally, would you want to clock yourself up to three zero? I mean, you can choose to like clock yourself up to a point where you can combo with this, or if you're low enough, you can just wait a turn and try to compress a bit. You know what I, I mean? Guess, Delay your yeah. finisher for a turn. Well, then you always run the risk of dying if you have bad triggers. That's the Thank other you. thing. And hey, you never know. Maybe there's some clock encore or something in this set, and you can just play over something and clock encore it. That's you true. Know. Just I don't know. Bad triggers. Maybe that's a way to you can cheese cheese trigger your. Uh, I mean, there has yeah. to be something that when it dies, pay one clock yourself, do a thing. I just don't. I don't think it's a good standby target because then you're not really. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't effect. stand by this. You'd always you know, play this. The first here. effect just gets ignored if you're doing that, and then you're just leaving it up to luck. Or well, not even luck. You you have no way to manipulate being at two or less or being at three or one. It is incredibly flavorful that she dupes herself from deck. That's super the, um the the first effect is kind of anti synergistic with standby though. Standby wants you to early play your level threes, where this wants you yeah. to have them all go into your deck and then just I, I don't cheat them in from deck. I don't think you'd play standby with the, in this deck, I think. Well, what's more wow. interesting about this card is, like, I think we'll probably eventually get data live in English, and since we have this card, this card can shine when it has more support around it. Yeah. Because I think this card is very powerful. It had a lot of support. I don't know if it has enough support in this, like... There are a lot of data live cards, because data live is a popular franchise in the Fantasia Bunko, but I don't know if it has enough to actually, you know, be a real deck. Mm-hmm. So. I, I I am a fan of this. I, I am a in general fan of this card though. I think the the effects yeah. are really cool and unique. I and I'm excited to play around with it. I'm um, I'm gonna give it a B just because I'm way too hesitant. I'm not being able to control the effect. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do B plus. I think it's B plus because yeah. I love Karumi and that the dupe thing is is way too cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm debating between either an A or an A+. Plus. Uh, I mean, if if there are ways to uh, to control your clock to consistently get the we we've been we've been a lot more you know conservative with giving out S's lately. So I feel that you know an A plus actually you know it means something if it's an A plus as opposed to an A. But um, within context yeah. of the set, I I don't think this is the most powerful thing you can run in the set. That's the big thing for me. I I, I think there are much more powerful things than this. Unfortunately, and I think it's that there aren't cards to support it. Not that, not that it's a bad card. I don't know. I mean, Every time I've I... seen people with an icy tail and get mad, I've seen you do it, Carmen. You like yeah, with like an icy tail sucks. and get mad. You know, you're not going to miss three icy tails. At least yeah, this one's also, free. It also lets you. It also gives you that out against decks like Konosuba. You know, what I mean, where they're super compressed, and then you're just like, okay, well, that compression just costs you. Like, yeah. You know, and, like, the decompression of it, too. Like, if you hit all their climaxes with the first one, then they're just fucked. They're just eating everything. No, that's, you a, know? that's the thing with the Icy Tail effect, is, like, it's decompression and damage at the same time. And you get you get triple it, like, guaranteed. I, th I think if you're just, like, going for one Icy Tail, it might be a little bit sacky. But, I mean, you take enough shots, you're going to make some baskets, you know? Yeah. That's true. You know what? I like the hey. fact that it searches more copies of itself. I like the fact that the combo's three. I like that it's off Blue Gate. I'm gonna bump it up to an A plus. I think it. I think this card has a lot of potential. Coach Carter giving it an A plus. I mean, I, I think I, I think I do agree with you here, Andy. Based on our uh, our grading scale, A is A is good. So I, I do I do think this card is good, and I do think it has some potential. I Fine. I. I I do want to build around it myself. And... Yeah, oh my god, don't all change your opinion because I mean that's why I went last because I figured oh, I no, had a you, controversial you, opinion. Yeah. Argument. Bringing up, I mean, I don't know. You look at the Sistine, we all gave that an A in the context of the set. I mean, if someone, I mean, I know someone, I'm super smart, but come on, guys. If like, someone can break something, work that, for it here. <laughs> if someone can break something in the English <laughs> that, isn't, that isn't standby, it might. It has a very good chance of using this card. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys are talking to the guy whose uh, first instinct on getting a bunny girl playset was to build Dougal. So you got it. Yeah, I guess you're an easy, easy convince. At least this card has. <laughs> I guess dope I can art. convince you anything's good. <laughs> dope art, D dope Dougal's character, card. dope flavor. Like this is this is a well designed card from a like card design standpoint. I think. Look okay. at that handsome yeah. art too. Yeah, the, 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 the data live light novel art is very, very good. Um. But yeah, I guess we've gushed enough. Stared at that climax on. for days. Uh, Billy, this is you. I don't remember this girl's name. It's Sistine's friend. She has the boobs, and Sistine is the the ears. Okay. So right. real quick, I just read this off, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So <clears throat> discard a card with a Fantasia or Fantasia Bunko or Magic from your hand to the waiting room. When this card is placed from your hand to the stage, if you pay the cost, look at the top four cards of your library. Choose one card among them, put it in your hand, move the rest of the way. Um, I definitely think this is a pretty strong card in this set for zero, just because it's any card, so you could grab a climax if you want to and set up for level one. Yeah, this is Alice, right? This is the lifeline chain. This Alice is the this is the yeah. new um the new super Cosmo profile because Cosmo wasn't good enough. Yeah, I know. Uh, Ty Tyler's been playing around with this a lot, and it seems decent in Alicization, at least. Uh... You know, draw a clock, look at top four, look at seven cards, try to find your level one climax. Well, it's, uh, all right, her it's name is even, Rumia. I looked it up. It's not even making you look at four. It's up to four. It's, so it's up to yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it also, this also... This is, it's an Akatsuki, but you not. have to pay one, but you can also pick anything. You have it to adds climaxes. For it, though. it can add climaxes, it can add events. You, so yeah, this, you can't if this set anything. has events, like, this set you can actually grab event. them easier. You There's can't one ditch. really good event. Yeah, you can't ditch a character. Or you can't ditch a climax or an event. You have to ditch a character. Right, it well, has to ditch a Fantasia. But, but you can grab anything. I guess it's kind of like an opposite of an Akatsuki then, right? You discard yeah, this specifically is, a character, but you can grab whatever. This is Super Cosma. It just has the drawback of you have to ditch a character. Hmm. Um, This is even better in a set with standby because you want to throw more targets into Grave. Like, I'm looking at the Mill 4. Like, that's even more Mill 4. That's even more chances to make sure my giant eleven five two two is in my grave. 
for when I play standby on my second right, turn. Yeah, this is uh, this is more targets in the grave, more chances to find a standby to hard play from your hand to get it on curve, uh, more chances to get the neg soul event in your hand. Seems uh, seems pretty solid to me. Definitely has a place as like maybe a two or a three of if you're three of or more if you're in an event deck, but like otherwise just like a B plus. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. I think um, I think the fact that you can like actually grab, you know, powerful event cards that you otherwise might not have consistent access to, it it makes splashing in a one or two of event a lot easier. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what type of events this set has, but um, I definitely think it's an eight tier card. And depending how good the events are in the set or how good the one ofs are, you know, maybe it, maybe it gets a plus, but. I just don't know enough about the set. Yeah, I'm trying to decide where to, where to put this. It's straddling the uh, the B plus. Bill, Billy gave it the A plus. He thinks it's really good. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an A minus. I think it's standby. Like standby is gonna be so huge in the set. I, I think sure, there's yeah. a lot of value to it. Just want to make sure you that get it every time. One. Yeah. You need your standby four of, but I definitely think it's a two three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Agreed. If you're worried about consistency about getting that climax in your hand, this is four four cards will do it for you. Most of the time. Oh, yeah. you, you know what one of the nice things about, like, Akatsuki's are, though? You can, like, discard climaxes. Well, and the and other... get to the rest of your deck. Well, you can't do that with an, it. This is an Akatsuki. This is more like Chibi Ron. I mean, you, you can know? do that with that la the very first, it's, the Brainstormer. This I is mean, more akin to Chibi Ron, not, not an Akatsuki. Like, right. the different effect. Hmm, I mean, it's like... Blue... This is like, okay, so the top check three... If you're getting flooded with climaxes, this actually is counterproductive. Well, on the other hand... Eight standby and Fujimi doesn't care what standby it slams. So if you just need a standby in four cards, it's pretty free, you know. Like yeah. if you're in blue and you're playing standby, you're probably playing the on death Rize, the double rare anyway. So well, that, that's why I give it the plus. It doesn't matter what standby you grab, right? Like, right. And, so and, you, it, yeah. Yeah. So you have the uh, you have the you have plenty of other ditch outs. Because the yellow thing that clocks you, which is the thing you're like trying to use to cheese yourself to level one on your second turn or whatever, to get the two two out and just like steamroll a game from there, mm -hmm. um, you know that just goes on climax play, and that's probably the most important card in the standby deck. So, you know, this this just gets you there. Like even if you only have space for one, if you need to make other cuts, you definitely it's a, it's a really important card. Yeah. And then, of course, with events, like Andy said, that's really good synergy. All right, moving on, right? Are we done with this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Super so, Kashi uh, Road. So, they got this uh, level zero. Oregami. Yeah. Beginning or... your opponent's attack phase. Run this, it. Is, this is the card with the band art. This is the card, the nerfed art card. The SR. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? In English? Yeah, the origami in English got nerfed. Art got nerfed. I don't, I don't know what the uh, the unnerfed art looks like, but this is pretty cool art. As far yeah. as far as nerfed art goes, this this is pretty cool. Did did they just like cover her up, or is this like completely new oh, art? No, the the SR has completely different, much looter art. <laughs> she is. Hey, well, I, I like the fact that they at least drew a new picture for it rather than like. Yeah, the you SR know, just putting some streaks of light or some bullshit. She yeah, is in a like, very compromising position. Yeah, it's got like no game, no life, super rare art. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they they blurred it. Unfortunately, got those uh, got those beams of light. This card yeah. is spoilers, dude. This is a spoiler card. That's oh, I can't watch the show anymore. Fuck. All right, uh, what do we? It's a fucking vanilla. Free <laughs> it's a fucking vanilla free run. It's runner, a runner. Dude. It's yeah, a play. Yeah. Runners are great. Could, I mean, whatever. Okay. It's boring. It's not right. Yeah, playable. Agreed. In in ye olden days, I would say Vanilla Runner was good, but there are too. Uh, many we're in the era of Goblin Slayer, though. Yeah, there's yeah. too much. There's too much like runners that also do other things. Like I don't know if I'm comparing this to like Himari Runner. Himari Runner is a bad runner, I think, in general. It's like a runner you run because you need green and you need afterglow. This is like worse than Himari because it's just a fucking vanilla. <laughs> Yeah, why doesn't why doesn't this have a on play ditch climax salvage character? Yeah, yo, free runners don't get the cred they deserve, you know. I don't like know. I I think free runners are better than mill runners probably, like because you hit them every time, you know. The whole point of having a plus and zero is that you can guarantee plus off it. Fair, fair point. Yeah, 
I don't think that makes it. And then you mill a climax, and you're like, "Fuck!" Now I'm taking more damage, and my card dies. Well, just don't mill a climax. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're That'd right. Be bad. I don't think that makes it better than B, though, right? No. No, I think it's B across the board. Playable. That's playable. If you need blue fix and a plus and zero. If it was a mill runner, I'd give it the same score. Origami's your gal, I guess. Yeah. All right. If you like running from the law because you're into lollies, then. All right. So your runner. Andy, tell us about this very powerful card. Is this a, this looks like Kurami. Yep. Is this in the show? What do you mean, <laughs> is this in the show? That's her outfit from the show. Oh, damn. Uh, on your turn, if you she have two or less cards. She wears that outfit all the time. <laughs> oh, really? She stared at one for like 10, fuck, 10 minutes. Oh, uh, she, she had like the whole dress on, too. She doesn't have that here. Anyway, on your turn, if you have two or less cards in your clock, this gets 2,000 power. And if you have three or more cards in your clock, this gets an extra soul. So this is... I, I guess the Kermie cards are going to be modal. And they get a different mode depending on what your clock looks like. If you need a blue level one to round out your level one lineup, is this not just like super good, or am I yep. being a Timmy? Like, think about it. Like, it's either a one zero six five for free, on the or turn. On, on okay, who cares? And, or <laughs> it has two, it has two soul. So if I mean, you're if you're if you're an end game, turn. okay. So think about it. So if you're in the end game and you need a two soul beater, this is a free two soul beater. How Why do you need a free two soul beater? You just play the Kurami finisher and get it out of your deck. And, Andy, how many times have you lost to a swing for three with Kokoro? Like, that's a real thing. Not many, and people don't play that deck anymore. <laughs> I guess. Uh, back when that shit was more popular. I don't know. Free two soul beater sounds pretty good. I wish the effects were reversed on this. Because I feel like you're going to go into your level one. You're going to want the extra power early on in your level one to hit over something. Or, I mean, you're going to want the extra soul to you know, push damage, and then when you get more cards in your clock, you want to be stronger to live back to your turn. Like, the souls don't do anything on your opponent's turn when they're hitting you, you know what I mean? Right, which... Where you, you want the souls on your turn. Well, uh, the power is also only on your turn. True, but I'd rather have more you know I mean? souls on my turn than I can side attack or do whatever, the, and then... The souls are cross turn. turn. The souls cross turn. Yeah, that doesn't matter, though. It doesn't matter. You can't swing on your That's... opponent's turn. Like, yeah, if it got extra know. soul on my turn, which I feel like, generally, you're going to be playing this card when you hit level 1. I mean, I guess it just depends how you level. It's kind of weird. It's you're you're nice kind of at, at the mercy at how you level. It's a nice offlane card. It, you, slant, you put two, climax combo, two of your level 1 climax combo cards in the other lanes, you put this in. Now they don't, get to, they don't get to side you and do damage with the level 0. They either get over it or they, don't, they attack for nothing. Like, like, I don't know. I mean, it's... Unlike the climax combo one, where both effects are like pretty good, both of these effects, like the two soul one, is definitely the better one, I think. Right. In general, um, and you just don't have any control over this. You have even less control over this at level one than you do at level three because you can't play healers at level but one. Yeah. When you're stranded for two turns because you triple cancel. I don't know. Maybe I was blinded by this triple S tier art. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we, we we talk about consistency a lot in Weiss. And the yeah, it's just like you, a C plus. You, the fact that you don't have a lot of control over this is kind of a strike against it. But I feel like both of the effects are fine. You just you just got to be flexible. Yeah, you know? ex exactly. Like, like you just got to look at your clock and you know set your play up accordingly. Like if you're less cards in your clock, you put this in a lane and hit over something with the extra power. If you have two, if you have three or more cards in your clock, you maybe side attack that lane instead, or set up a favorable side attack, or just cram damage down their throat in an open lane. Yeah. Like, I feel like I mean, that makes it great, though. I mean, it doesn't make it great, but I think in order to properly pull out the full potential of these Kurami cards, you kind of have to be flexible and say, this is I my mean, position against, I'm in now, i got to work with what I have. Cards Against cards like Aaron, though, I mean, you're still, it's not, the Aaron's not doing anything by sitting in front of you. I mean, you're not, you're, you're still getting that other soul. So, like, you don't have to slam a climax to do that. I mean, don't anything, compare things to Aaron. That's not fair. Yeah, that it's a... bounces. 
a losing battle. Anything that bounces, I'll say. Anything that bounces. Yeah, you know dude, I mean? soul like, but... but if this gets extra soul, you can side that lane and not let them have the card back in their hand. Don't they get to go on it? Whatever. Yeah. Okay, you're just even better. You're not losing soul to do it. I don't know. Uh, I, I need your thought this was really good because I really want to run this card in like every deck because I really want to play a card with that art on it. Um, but <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you know, just not. Alright, it's going in. It's going in sync now. It's going in sync. I'm C plus club. It's a. Uh, it's definitely like a good niche card. Yeah. You I... just got. You just got to be a flexible player to play it. Karumi Waifu. Karmen, it, Karmen, it will be in my sync version of this build, and uh, it will be swinging at you for three every time I sync okay. something. Okay. All right. Yeah. D cool. Because of the potential inconsistency. I, don't I, I just don't want people to be scared off of trying this card because we all gave it like a C though. Yeah. Like okay. I think it's like definitely a very very playable card, and like if you need blue, like I think Carmen said it really well at first. Like if you need some blue to round out your level one, this is like a yeah, pretty decent yeah, yeah. inclusion. Yeah, I think it's fine. I just can't give it higher than a C plus. I can't put it into the playable tier solely due to the inconsistent nature of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on. All right. We have uh, Rumia and Sistine under one roof. If you have two or more other characters with uh, Bunko trait or magic trait, this gets 1,000 power since at 55. When this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, if Paradise Everlasting, the book, is in your climax zone, search your library for up to one character with Boko trait or magic trait and put it into your hand. You can't even print a fucking 7 k Mikaze in 2020. No, it only gets up to 6-5. It's, Yikes. It's not enough. It's not On enough. book? On book? book, yeah, it's not enough. Yeah, that seems... Good art wasted on bad card. I guess it sits 55 cross turn. Is that big enough on do turn one though? No, do we even fucking care? That's what I was gonna follow up. Do we even do we even care that it's a fucking fifty five? Nope. No. Nope. It's not gonna get reverses, it's, it's gonna get backed up into oblivion. I mean, there is a married and... life in the set. There's Toka. So I mean like I don't know, maybe for your budget deck or I need if you wanna build mono Akashic records, there's more than enough cards to build mono Akashic records. So Akashic Akashic records only, I guess. Like you'd never play this. There, are... no. I mean, it's just, it's just pack filler, you know. Otherwise, but I mean, Shimikazes are still serviceable. It's but... six five. If, if you're not running like a a Kashuk record well, tribal deck, they're instantly worse in English because AOT exists. Like in general, right. like that's always something to keep in mind. Like you you think about Shimikazes, and you're like, oh yeah, it's like serviceable, right? Like you can snipe a lane or two. Who cares? And then you're like, wait, what if all the lanes are Aaron? Like. Anytime I've ever played Shimikazes in decks, and I don't sit down across from AOT. They're and fine. even sometimes when I do sit down across from AOT, it's like... You, you, they get there, you know? Yeah, I They're mean... not great, but they get there. It is a plus in combo. It has good art. It goes in your mono Akashic Records deck. Yeah, or I your budget case, deck. Wor yeah, worst case, it's serviceable. It's still a plus in combo. Ugh, it, it's 6,500 off of book. Um, at least, Ew. Book, at I, least book I, I didn't say it was good. Pluses. I said it was serviceable. At least book technically pluses. Okay, it could be worse. All right. Uh, I guess we're done, right? Let's just move on. Mm -hmm. Carmen. Oh, I forget this girl's name. This is the Lolly Bait character from Akashic Records. Um, the one zero six five can't side attack, and when it becomes reverse, goes to the bottom of your library. Um, as a free one zero six five, this drawback is. Better, better than, than most. One. I mean, this is Puck without the level buff. But the thing that makes Puck good is the level buff. What do we think about Puck that's not a level 2? I don't like it. Yeah. As far as a 1065 goes, I'd rather play the Kurami. You think? I think so? the Kurami is way better than this. I mean, it's this is just cross turn. Yeah, yeah this, this is a this, shit. It, well, this is this is more if you're in a more defensive build. If you want to hold lanes cross turn instead of just win over your turn. I, yeah, I don't think this is great, but I think it's fine. The the drawback on first deck is not as much of a big deal as you think. It's in, it's no. on your later decks that it's terrible. Um, I mean, it's not like like one zero six fives that can't side and go to the bottom. They're not like terrible, but I I you know I I don't like that they get bottom decked, and uh, yeah. I'd just rather play the Kermie than this. 
I don't know. The fact that the Kurami doesn't cross turn, I think this has a place if you want to. Yeah, I'll yeah, just, just give it a middle of the road C. Yeah, or you know what? You know what? C minus. C minus. It's too bad on your like, successive decks. I would see just because it backs up to eight, eight, five, nine, five. If you got something in the back row giving it five hundred power, that's not that's not bad. Kurami's versatile. This card's just always bad. If you if you like lollies, you play this card. Next. Uh, uh, Billy. Billy. Yep. Okay. So for each of your other uh, Fantasia Bunko characters, your spirit characters in the back row, this gets fifteen hundred power. Um, the additional ability is it can be activated up to once per turn, and during your turn this gets plus X power, X being equal to the number of other Bunko or Spirit characters. Hmm. That's when you play an act. Okay. So, so it sits at 95 nine, plus assist. 95, yeah. And then when you use a backup, so it you, gets humongous. It's like that card in uh, Conti Drew. Huge. So it's a 2195? Yeah, 2195 yeah, on... As long as you got two cards in the back, which you should. Yeah, as long as, as, long as you're cool. playing the game, you're playing the game. Um, yeah, if you're yeah, playing the then, game, it's a two one nine five. And, and then, then if you play it, then brainstorm it goes to eleven five, and back it up on your opponent's turn, it goes to eleven five. Like that's okay. In, let's not it's, say it. Well, it goes to thirteen five, like with a under a backup. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. As it seems defense. like a decent standby target. Yeah. Well, mm, there, there is a better. There's one a, you, you got, target. you guys didn't see the standby target. I saw it. Um, or, uh, Andy and I guess, really I guess if you, if if you want a comparator for what we were talking about for standby targets in this deck, because I think that's important, go to slide twenty six. Uh, okay. that that's the standby target we're uh we're dealing with here when we're talking 26, about twenty six, the yellow one. Good yeah. level two yep. standby targets. Yep. For each year, for each of your other back rows. It gets 2,500, okay. yeah, so it's right. 11 five. Means nothing comparatively. I guess if you wanted to do... This is like... a round out blue rather than yellow. This is like a defensive card in a non-standby deck. Yeah. Because yeah. it's aggressively yeah. costed at one. Okay, well, here's the thing. Like, the standbys are red, and that the standby target's yellow. Who cares? Standby. So if you wanted to run, like, red-blue... You would maybe never, yeah. you know, maybe you run this card instead. Well, you haven't seen the event either. There's a two one. There's a two four anti damage counter. That's like the, that's the like top end. Is that yellow? Yeah, yeah, it's yellow. Oh, I'm I'm not scrolling back and finding another. Slide, yeah, so. like all all of the all of the standby supportive cards, like that card we talk about about the clocks you, check stop four. Those are also yellow. Like yellow yellow's a really powerful card to support standby. Blue is yeah. more of a splash color in the deck for some of the level threes we haven't seen yet well I, this card's definitely perfectly serviceable in your data live deck yeah and hey maybe if data live gets standby maybe this will be a good standby target for them if it's I, not for yeah Jenny, I, you know i like that it's really aggressively costed for like it's like a 2195 pretty good for like no drawback basically the act if stuff that, is just gravy yeah, if the yellow card didn't exist in yellow if that yeah if the yellow card didn't this card, this card would be the target. I don't think so. I, I think standby, I think standby targets need to have two soul, like in general. Mm -hmm. You'll fall behind. Yeah. Not always. If if this Not gets always. like winded back to your hand, you can like play it back again easier. You know what I mean? You stand by a two two and they pop it back to your hand. That kind of sucks. Yeah. What do you want them to do? What are they going to do? Anti anti change a two one. Cool. All right. That's fine. You just. Blow and I mean, hey, you, you, they swing at this. You back it up to a million power, and then you swing for two next turn anyway. I guess. The best part is that it's aggressively costed, I think. I'll give it like a C plus. It's like a each card. Or ah yeah, C plus. I don't, give I, that a B minus. I, I don't think it's playable. I like B minus. I think it's good. I think it's fine. Like in the set as a whole it's fine. I think it's it, it, I don't know, it definitely toes that line though. I, I think it I think this card is probably gonna be better in data live than in Fujimi yeah. Bunko. It'll be like, like one when of those the data live set cards, comes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Fujimi as a as a whole is just it's kind of outclassed, unfortunately. So I, I guess I'd reverse these. C plus for Fujimi Bunko, maybe like B or B minus in Data Live. Future Data Live. I mean, there's even enough Data Live cards to play a serviceable Data Live deck, and by that I mean it has a level one combo and a finisher. Yes. Um, 
Then like, you have enough cards to actually build a functional deck, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, it got more... That, DXD... Um, what is it? The one... Is this a zombie? Those are the three ones that, oh, like, yeah. got a lot of support. And unfortunately, not Full Metal Panic! Uh, Rest a... in peace, Moggy Brilliant Park. <laughs> yeah, not, a, not enough Amaburi cards either. Alright, let's move on. This is a more more interesting card. Uh, Drew? Drew so if you have four four more characters with Fantasia, Bunko, or Magic, it gets minus one level in your hand, so it's an early play. Uh, when it is placed from your hand of the stage, you may choose a character with Fantasia, Bunko, or Magic in your clock and put that character in your memory. So you're healing to memory. And then you pay one, pitch two from your hand to the waiting room. When you play it from the hand to your stage, um, if so, you choose one of your other characters, and that character gets plus X power, and X equals that character's power. So double a character's attack. Okay. Double a character's attack on play, heal to memory, free early play condition. Um, I don't know how much more of a toolbox on one card you want. That's pretty good. Yeah, how good is doubling the power on something? Especially pay one, ditch two. Not that great, but I think no, the it's... first two effects are more important. It's situational, but an early play... Full field early play heal to memory seems yeah more, more than more than sufficient. Like I don't know, especially in a standby deck. True. Think about it. Like you protect like two lanes, your one lane with your shitter gets run over that you opened up the previous turn from like playing something big, and then like you just play this into it for two and heal one. Like being able to elongate your level two as a standby deck is really really good. Mm -hmm. And like you're running the Sistines at zero anyway. It's like auto fixes for the self for this card. I, and I guess if you are up against some obscene wall for some reason, you can... Uh, Futaba, a, a very normal oh, okay. obscene wall. Okay. I would, I would yep. gladly play one and ditch two to kill that card on my first attack. As as far as beating big walls, actually, like things like Reinhardt or Futaba or Devil Homer or stuff that gets I mean, super, super, not... super big. This is like an actual way to get over it. Yeah. This is a way to get re over it. Getting, re zero getting support, that ray, you know, oh, no. getting large. Or not even that. I'm saying, think about this. Right, you can't bounce Reinhardt. You can bounce Futaba. You can bounce Ryder. Um, but you can't bounce Reinhardt. <laughs> this is an actual out to Reinhardt. If you, you know, buff like, if you buff something and then play a climax. Reinhardt can't beat it. You well, know? Reinhard, it, it, it doubles the attack before... Yeah, before, I mean, before that, yeah. But, Reinhard, I mean, if, if you're pumping a level 3, you're at, like, 20k. Well, it's the, it's the power that character has at that time. If you buff it with something else beforehand, it doubles it. True, true. Yeah, yeah Reinhardt can run, double. Though. He doesn't have great performance or all of his effects in the middle, but he can run. Yeah, he can, he can just run to the back row. They can also back up their Reinhardt to 22k or 22.5 or whatever. Well, if, Rein if Reinhardt runs to another position, does he keep his power? I the don't believe so. I doesn't think he have to be position. center lane? So if he runs to the left or right, he's just a 10k. Hmm. So even then, I mean, you removed Reinhardt. I don't know. Even then, I, I don't think I don't think the third effect. The third effect is super super marginal. It's a toolboxy effect. It's the yeah. fact that it is a if you have an on reverse combo at level three or something, you know that might full come into play. Full field healed or memory in a deck that mills this hard. So much on demand mill that we've seen so far, even in just this color. Like, you know, that's really really good. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to actually like you know get to third deck. You play this on second deck. That healed or memory can be really strong. I guess the drawback is yeah. that. This card doesn't really hold board well on its own. No. Well, it's an early play, though. So If you compare it to something like uh, Aqua from Konosuba, right? Yeah. Like, that's like a 3-1 heal. Well, she doesn't know. Uh, and, and it walls up. It doesn't wall up. It doesn't wall up. No, it's just a 9 So it's like a 3-1, though. This yeah, is a 3-2, three three and it doesn't live. Well, but you're playing standby, so you're saving stock naturally. Mm -hmm. The two isn't that big of a deal. And it goes memory. Are you Mem playing standby? Memory's a big thing. Oh, yeah. You're Not necessarily. Standby. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, this, this is definitely the early play of choice in the standby deck, I think. Yeah. Like, because it is just a full, full field's the easiest condition in the world for any deck, let alone a standby deck. Especially standby, yeah. Yeah. Go. Yeah. That last effect seems yeah. like... It seems like a nice, you know, after talking it out, 
I kind of like that last effect just as the utility of it. Yeah, it's a toolbox effect. Yeah, just and, because nice. you guys are right. Like the first two effects are good enough to stand on their own. Yeah, you're, you're never gonna use the third effect, but when you do need it, it'll be there, and that's yeah, nice to know. Uh, and it'll let you put yeah. two standby targets in your waiting room. That that is true. Flat A for me. Or or climaxes. Or climaxes. Because it's cardial. Just yeah. The card you'll see in most Fujimi decks for sure. All right. Anything else? Good to move on. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can't remember any. I think it's me. Yeah, this is from my sister, my writer again. Okay, when this card is placed on the sta fuck. When this card's placed to stage from your hand, draw two cards, discard two cards, put a card from the top of your deck into your stock. So it's basically a three one draw two ditch two. When this card attacks, choose one of your Fantasia or novel characters and they get 500 power times the number of your other characters. No, of your characters with it. With those traits. Well, yeah, everything's Fantasia Bunko, I think. Though. So, wait, does this give 2,500? Yes. It's okay, not other. It it's doesn't say other. That might be a mistranslation. Um, uh, Hot Sea, like, that, that happens a lot, but we'll, we'll, we'll operate on it being a 2,500 for now. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. No, I mean this is like a one cost ditch out at level it helps three. It helps draw you into your climax, like your finishing climax. Yeah. Uh, it re it, it's really good at doing that because you only pay one for it essentially. Like if you're just digging for your combo, you draw two, ditch two, and then it's only cost one to play. Yeah, that's, that's true. But that's kind of like all it's good for is just digging. Yeah, I mean, unless you're playing a on reverse finisher that really needs this power buff, I'd almost rather play a uh, a top check X to try to find your finisher climax. Yeah, there was a top check X in the trial deck, right? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Andy, you missed it. It's the best trial deck they've ever printed, actually. Oh, it's got two yeah. climax combos in it. Yeah, the Fujimi trial no deck. No way. It two has climax a, combos it has a in level a trial one, deck? Level one plus in combo. And a level three yep. finisher combo, both off gate. Yep. It's six gate two two soul. <laughs> and the the trial deck. Has yeah, they, the you know they had to throw the two two souls in there because the yeah. trial deck. <laughs> That's funny. The Beanley informed us that it has the only um, drop search. Uh, right? Drop searcher in the in the entire set. Yeah, yeah. Drop in search, the trial drop deck. deck. Yeah. Anyway. Compared to that, though, like a trial deck top check X, I mean, I can check while we, you guys are talking about it. Let me see. Make sure we're not lying. Although I do love lying. Uh, no, it searches. It, it searches deck. We lied. Okay. All right. So maybe this yeah. is relevant. I hate it, though. Uh, Wait, it, so it's not a top check X. It's a... No, it's just... It searches... It can trips from deck for a character. Well, it's a three. As far as setting up your finisher turn, like if you have a stock dependent combo or whatever, it's like you're digging for both your actual character that you need to finish with and the climax, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty stock effective way to do it. Yeah, I guess. The, so you could like fire off multiples of these. You could like even, you know, looting into another or like draw into another copy of this card, play another one, draw two more cards. You know. Yeah, the, the trade-off here, though, for this being one stock is unlike a top check X, it doesn't cantrip. So you don't keep hand size as well if you're, uh, if you're digging hard with this. Oh, this I, I like the second effect so much better than the first effect. Uh, plus 25, like... I think the second effect's, like, super marginal. Well, it's like... I think, okay. you, I think, you, I think this card's great at digging and only at digging. This card would be a bazillion times better if it was... Some other form of play for one, such as um, heal, uh, like um, heal to stock or something like that. I like. It'd be a lot more versatile then, but yeah, I don't I'd, know if I'd want that. Then you're then you're minusing two. Well, I don't know if I'm running this. I'm saying it's just like my deck isn't good enough to like get into its thing. Like, I, dude, we saw the Rumia. Would I? I would rather play Rumia to get me into my climaxes. The level zero Rumia, the Cosma, the Super Cosma. 
I would play that 10 out of 10 times before I put a single copy of this card in my deck. Like, straight up. A little up. harsh. I mean, yeah, it is It is harsh, but it's just like... I don't see a place... I don't, I don't know if I, I agree with that. I don't see a place for this card. There's There all. might be a lot of really good zeros in this set, and like, you can't cram your deck full of level zeros, though. You know what I mean? Like, if, if your top end's pretty light, like... Let's say you're just running the Kurami as your only level 3, basically, and you just want to hit it as much as possible. Instead of cluttering up your 0 lineup, you can kind of just add these in at the top. Maybe. I, I know. think it's all about ratios, dude. I, it's, it's almost... It's, I don't want to say it's unplayable, but I don't want to say it's great. I, I think it's C+. It's like only in these situations where... You're you you don't have the space to run the Rumia to dig for climax. The Rumia yeah, is yeah. better. Like I'll concede, it, the Rumia is probably better eight out of ten times. I'll give you that. <sighs> yeah, yeah uh, it's feel. just another one of those ones that really toes the line. Yeah, I feel probably is a C plus though. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm gonna I'm just gonna give it a C. I think it. it if it really I is 2500 so. power, that's power creep, like straight up. You know. These are always other. I I, I want to say it's a typo. Why don't any of you people read Japanese? And and she can pick herself, so. Yeah, she can pick herself. Most of them can pick themselves, though. It's not like. Yeah, it's not deal. novel. Yeah. I don't know. This card seems great in the decks where it's great. Well said. Great. And that could be said about any card. That's kind of a cop out on my end, but. Thank you. Still Maybe. true. All right, um, Brian. Let's, let's talk about uh, Katori, Love of Ifrit. This isn't the right Katori, dude. It's also not the right Ifrit. <laughs> <laughs> when damage dealt by this card is not canceled, this card gains 6,000 power for the turn. I hate all these, even if this is a not bad one. I mean, it can it can poke for one and slam over something, but I mean, back to what I said before. It's not consistent, and that's a problem. I mean, we've seen a lot of... Oh, wait, this is a, this is a level zero. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen, like, a lot of these, <laughs> if the damage is canceled, if the damage is not canceled, do some effect. Is this not, like... What's the gamble here? You swing for one at an enemy zero, maybe two, and your opponent, on their second turn, cancels on one? I mean, yeah, it happens, right? But, like, are you willing to take that gamble when this card doesn't live cross turn? No. That's yeah, I think, I think that, that's, I think the, that's the I think that's the answer, right? I think this card would be playable if it did something else when you played it. Or even... You know what I mean? Power like, if it was 500, it, or if it was, like, 1,000 and only gained 4,000 power, only gained 5,000 power, but did something useful when you play it. It was, it was like, on play... Okay. Or, or maybe if it, it top checked. If it top checked you, that'd be at a whole level, different story. At level zero, this is effectively the same card as a card that reads when damaged by those this card is not cancelled, this gains plus thirty five hundred power. What sits cross turn at forty five? Like so what if you You can take out level ones it? with a zero. You well can. what if you what if you changed it to say when damage dealt by this card is not cancelled, this gains plus thirty five hundred power until the end of your opponent's turn that would be really good that that's worth taking the gamble right, right. on them True. canceling on one whereas this is just straight up not this is just straight up bad it's almost f i'm gonna give it a d minus because you could yeah, kill level ones with it but like <sighs> it, it's yeah. really bad I don't think you could it's... like sack into it but like this is the type of variance i don't like yeah. this is like yeah. truly blind truly random whereas like the kurami from earlier the one zero like it's you know you random have some what level your of control, look like, but yeah. you can, like you, you go into your turn with the knowledge of what it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to give it a D plus because it's it is spicy. It's a fun effect, but I. Uh, Do any viable sense. builds even have space for something like this though? No, look, Prop the doubtful. set's too good. Highly doubtful. Yeah, like that's one thing. It's like I think that's the big thing we were talking about the previous card too. It's like. We're talking about this card that might have place in some build. Like, Fujimi is, like, a good set. This is a yeah. set that, like, topped for a long time in Japan. Like, around until, like, other standby decks bullied it out. Um, 
but like this set was a powerhouse for a long time uh, and it brought on the sort of like standby hellscape that people like to talk about even though it's like really you know fear mongering it's not really true but right. uh th this set is like it's a generous like pretty generous power level so mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind when looking at these cards that are like filler and stuff like that. Like, there's really no place for them in the set. All right. Yeah. yeah I mean, like. Yeah. What are you? What are you start? cutting? What are you cutting for this? Like, I just nothing. I don't think I can nothing. fit it. You yeah. Just don't wanna... It's like Bra brainstorms. You run this alongside your plusing zero to do what? Like, nothing. Mm, seems pretty bad. I, I'd go as far as to give it. I'm going to give it an F. Yeah, I think it's a it's a I trap. Did, like it, yeah. if you if you run this card, it's like you're really fu it's a Timmy trap, you know. Especially in mono data. Like, the trap. classic Timmy trap. They got fucking they got fucking origami free runner. They don't in the same color. They don't need this card at all. All right. Yeah. Next. Um, I can't ever think of a deck. In all right. So this is the teacher from Akashic Records. Um... Yeah, that's all you need to know. Uh, move to uh, so it has a startup ability. It's act. Uh, pay one, rest two of your characters. Move two cards from the top of your library to the waiting room. Choose a one level extra. Lower. Oh, it's fucking cigarettes on a card, right? Yep. Yeah, cigarettes on a card on a level Repeatable zero. Cigarettes. Yeah. Repeatable cigarettes. Um, yeah, I... is that better than a brainstorm? No. It's too. No. No. <laughs> um, is it unplayable? No. no. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like in your yeah. Akashic Records only deck, this is your plusing back row, right? You don't have a brainstorm. Do cigarettes every turn? What What do you have to do to hit something? In two cards, you have to hit a level one or higher card for it to be a meaningful plus, right? Because right. like on your first deck, the big, the big thing of, of, of this card over a normal brainstorm is it's more consistent on first deck, right? So you have to probably only run 16 zeros or so to ensure that you'll, within two cards, have a higher percent chance to hit at least a level one or higher card so that you can set up your, your level one plays. Because typically, like most decks, especially even if you are running Mono Akashic Records, you have so much mill between Rumia and Sistine at zero, you can reliably get into second deck at level one. So you'd have to build your deck to have a like high percentage chance for this to hit level ones. Otherwise, it's just like strictly worse than a brainstorm. I think I don't think it's strictly worse. It's a guaranteed plus. You know, never have to worry about whiffing your brainstorms. But mm. I don't know. It it just doesn't go through enough cards. It doesn't always get you a character you want to get. Have to rest two. That that is true. I, if this was a rest one, it would be like it would be very good at. It rest would be one. like yeah, if it's, quite a bit better. It's, yeah. If it's, I'll give it a I don't think it's bad, though. It's like a guaranteed plus on your first deck. No, yeah, it's, uh, it is a guaranteed plus. It's basically Ambush Union. I just think Cigarettes is a trap. It's like, um... Cigarettes is objectively worse than, uh... What is it? Uh, Warehouse. Which is a card that already has problems. Yeah. Um... So like I'm just gonna leave it as a middle of the road C. If you're if you're playing Akashic Records, like if if you're if you're buying the set because you're into Akashic Records and they have like enough cards to build a deck, like you play this card 100 percent of the time in all those decks. Ugh, so I gotta give it the minus. It's rest two. It is rest two. Yeah. It's rest two. That's what's kind of did it for me too. Bingo. Well, yeah, you're so used to Ambush Union though, you know. I know. Cry I'm spoiled, it's, but spoiled rotten. <laughs> it's got crying Rumi on the background, dude. If you're into that. You know. Ooh. All right. Next. <laughs> oh, and I've a, 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 even worse character than all the characters in Akashic Records. It's all okay, you, so This card First is effect, If you have uh, if your stock has, or if you have two or less stock, this card gains fifteen hundred power. And whenever this card is placed on the stage from your hand, place two cards from the top of your deck to the waiting room. If there's a character with level zero or lower during this turn. No soul is deducted for side attacks, so basically you can just side for free. It's an oversize that sides for free later in the game. Uh, nice. And it's a two card mill. It's like a better oversize than most, just like two, two or fewer oversizes. Yeah, it's versatile at least, which is the versatility is really nice. M maybe yeah. relevant. Why does it have to have Shizuka on it? <laughs> I... 
Oh my god. How did oh, fucking... Good. How did fucking... You, dude, how did Okasan Online get one card? One card with Pochi art that's completely unplayable. And this fucking show gets like five or six cards. And one of them's a double rare. It's not fucking fair, dude. What show is she from? <laughs> uh, my sister, my writer. It's like Aramanga Sensei Light, but without Claris and uh, A1 Pictures drawing it. Mm. Man, I wish they had done oh, some of these cards. Had like this the... is fine though. Like unironically, yeah, like, this, good, this, this is, is fun. this is this is a this is a big Andy card. Um, it is a big Andy card. I like I'm, it a lot. I'm gonna give it a middle of the road B. I think this is playable if you need like a blue fix, like oversized. Like I, to two or fewer. I've like started to dislike that a lot more. Um, because it like punishes you for the times when you high roll and cancel at zero. Um, where you'd want to like keep a lot of stock to be more compressed mm -hmm. later. But I think the second effect is worth a drawback, basically, because it's just free two card mill. And yep. it, it it might be a good shitter, you know. The 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 mill is nice. Leaves a damage. I, I kind of wish the. I'm not like a huge fan of side attacking for free, but I guess I've never really played with it either. It lets you leave a. But damage hey, but buffer. hey, thirty five hundred that does something else and retains mm -hmm. its usefulness later on. I'm all about it. It's the same fucking idea as just what... Chisato or Futaba, right? Like the the fact yeah. that that card is a it's a one card scry later in the game. Pretty good. What's the, uh, I mean, the go even the Goblin Slayer, what's the Chaser sit at? 3k? 35? It sits over there. 3K, yeah, it seems like over. a really good counter to that card. Well, there you go. Just side with it. Like, well, you, can't, you, can't, you can't side it. Oh, that's right. The Chaser yeah. says you can't side attack it. Yeah, I mean, it's more that it is, the, the effect that they chose for this card happens to have a two-card mill on it. The, the effect that it gives it is whatever. The fact that it lets it side and gives you the option to create damage buffers with your shitter at endgame. Uh, if you're lucky enough, and I mean, like, when we say lucky enough, hitting a level zero is fucking whatever. It has to be a character. You can't hit a climax, but mm -hmm. still, it's still better than most. You know what? I, I think I'm gonna give it a B plus. I've talked myself into it. That's like totally fine if you need blue fix plus and zero. Yes, it's all right. All right, next card. Brian, I think, right? I think it's uh, Drew. It's oh, it's Drew. Drew. Okay. Oh, is it okay, so we got a startup ability, which is an X. T1, rest 2. Look it up to 3. Shoot at the 1. Fantasia, Bunko, or Spirit. For among them, reveal it, put it in your hand, put the rest into the waiting room. Hey, look, guys. It's Union if she wasn't broken. Another rest 2 plus, yeah. This is better than fine. cigarettes. It's better than cigarettes. Better than, better than cigarettes. Yeah. Um, what did we give cigarettes? Like all C's? This is a this is a C plus. This is, this is a C plus. Yeah. yeah. C plus. Which one was the cigarette? Oh, the. Wait, yeah, I, I gotta go back and like retcon my score on that other one. I didn't know this card existed. You know, it's like completely outclasses that other card. Yeah, it's uh, well, I don't know. Selective in your top three versus selective in your grave. I think it's dependent, but this is generally it better. It mills more cards. It's generally better. Yeah. Yeah, milling more cards is a big reason for the C+. Plus. <laughs> One more card is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Does, does Data Life have a break? Is it, is it just... Is this the, it's uh, like a B-, minus, right? It does like... not. This is, this is your plusing zero this for... The, this is the plusing engine in Data Life. Yeah, this is your plusing right. engine for Data Life. Okay. Ambush Union is broken. This is Union. Basically, basically Ambush Union. This, this is... is this is a good card. It's not niche. Well, no. It's like actually okay. good. Andy, we saw you know? Quinella. Andy. Dude. Yeah. Quinella back row. I was gonna say like Quinella back row is a balanced Union because it's still mm -hmm. a really good card that you'd play in every shell that runs that stuff. This is just worse than that, but splashable. So like you know. I don't. I don't know what you'd rate Quinella, though, which is a look at five, add one, but you have to resonate. I mean, that's definitely better, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I would rate that higher than B minus. I'd rate that other card as like a uh, probably in the A's. This is your yeah. plusing engine for Data Live, though. So yeah, and keep that in mind. Reviewed. Guaranteed plus, dude. Five of these profiles. Yep. 
thus far. So, so just slam a rating down because I'm tired of this, these cars. All right, next card. Do something interesting. Ooh, we got the sassy maid. Another God. Shizuka. Fuck. When me. you're. This card is placed from your hand to the stage. If you have another Fantasia character or novel character, she gets 2,000. So she comes in at 65. And on reverse, you have the blue gate. Choose a character with Funko or novel in your waiting room. Put it in your stock. Choose a character and it gets 3,000 power. This is like the... Isn't it great being Kizniver? <laughs> is, this is like Minami that doesn't plus. Yeah. It's like the Kizniver combo, but good. But look, it gets it I gets mean, over what, 6K. What, it gets I mean, over 6K. It, okay, so this com oh, hold on, this combo's legit. It's not like it, if it's Minami, but good. It's just different, you know. Well, you need you need a way. So these cards are good when you have a way to instantly turn stock on your next turn or cross turn into a plus. And we just saw two of them. Um. So yeah, maybe this card has legs. Like whether the, fa the fact that it snowballs, it, it for, this card swings for seventy five on its own in the first lane. Yeah, that's really right. good. And then it has a that Minami snowball potential, and it generates a bunch of clean stock. Like if you have like a stock heavy like level two, level three game, it's actually really solid. And you're actually com you're you're not blind stocking. You're choosing. To, choosing. You're choosing what you're putting in there, which is really and nice. 3,000 like powers said, are a shitload. It gets yeah. over 7k, which is great. I, I more so like that this set has two options in this same color for uh, instantly turning this additional stock into a plus on your following turn. Unfortunately, they are both rest two. Um, but, you know, is what it is. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's more for when you're trying like to the, early play a bunch one, of stuff. This one's okay. This one's definitely OGs. This one's well, definitely... I mean, it's going down that much hand worth it. Uh, going down that much hand. Well, you you have to have other ways to plus it back. Like, well, I was talking about Kizniver before, and they kind of, like, have a lot of ways to plus, but you need stock to do it. Maybe... And they have a lot of early plays, and the stock building combo is really, really good there, so if you have other ways to, like, pay one and plus, or, like, a bunch yeah. of early plays that do pluses. What, I agree what, with Drew. I think it's like a, a B tier. What early plays have we seen? We saw the... I guess maybe you run like a blue-green with the uh, 50 cent early play. Oh, uh, yeah, with the... Uh, with the, Cento. The clock shoot. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe this is a way to like play multiple clock shoots at level level 2. Maybe. Um, You'll clear <sighs> off an opponent's board. This sits small. They swing over it with stuff that's easy for your 50 cent to snipe. Um, yeah. And you maybe. Maybe. I, I don't I know. I, I still don't like. I, I think it's just a ski plus because it I, swings big in its first I, lane and that's it. I agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, as a stock, as a stock building combo, I think it's solid, but I, I don't know if it has a place. It a synergizes problem. with that uh, data live card where depending on your stock. Or was it stock or was it clock? It's clock. The level one was it clock? Okay, never mind. That'd have been cool. That'd have been a neat interaction. These three Ks snowball so hard, and the fact that you're getting the first reverse because you're at seventy five hundred. That last lane, if you try field these, that swing for like thirteen five. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a can... lot. Pretty big. You, you combat standby pretty well. That it does. That it does. I don't know. I don't think there's much more to say about this one. Yeah, I like that it's on pants though. Like pants level ones are dope in general. Are they? I mean, it lets you run pants and it not like pants is always a finisher climax. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's just like gives you a cool climax lineup option. We hate book though. All right, a, a more a far more danker card. Uh, who has All this right. one? This is me. Okay. We have uh, Miku, Temptation of Diva. Uh, rest this card. Choose a character with Fantasia Bunko or Spirit Trait, and it gets twenty five hundred power till the end of the turn. Uh, choose one of your opponent's cost zero or lower front row characters. You and put it on the bottom of their library. Drew, you cost. stop that. 
You stopped. He didn't even finish reading. You read that. He read the second. He read the second. He read the second ability. That's all I needed. Cost <laughs> this card a card. Rest this, or pay two. Rest this. Heal one. Y'all want a toolbox, dude? Yeah, that seems. Uh... You want that shit? You yeah, like that want, shit? We, we love to sink on a good time. character. Miku, Miku's a great character. Dude. Ag <laughs> aggressive lesbian. We love it. Except she loves Cheeto. Sucks. I'm gonna minus one every turn just to keep level zeros off the board. Or cost this, uh, uh, this card sucks. What do you mean it sucks? Happy about you pick you pick one of any of these very strong effects and perform it every turn, and you killing a cost zero character in the front row isn't very good. Oh yeah, that's the worst one. Plus twenty five hundred power is absurd. Rest to give twenty five hundred is great, but you have to keep in mind this is a one one. Yeah, who cares? You're playing standby. Yeah. Whatever. Or, and or if you're playing... A2 rest this heal, I mean, that's, you know, that's great and all, but... Okay, think about it this way, Andy. Never gonna happen. You're playing a standby deck that's running eight standby, meaning you are going to randomly trigger standby more often, and you're a deck that wants to race yourself with self-clock effects so that your first standby is always a 2-2, two -two, is your goal. So... When you randomly trigger, this is like pretty good as like, you know, just a toolbox card. Repeatable heal in a deck where you want to stall and you're playing like that um that two four event that gives two characters that, yeah. minus two soul. Like this kind of repeatable heal is pretty invaluable no matter what the stock costs. Middle effect is yeah, most of the time sucks. probably a minus for you because yeah, you'd be I running see. over that character anyway. Middle effect sec sucks. The fact that it's a 1-1, one, one, and then I have to start paying 2 for it later. Like, I mean, I mean it's kind of it's... ironic for me to say that after I just praised this stock-building combo, but I think that this is way too costly. It's Dude, not about also, being costly. You're, you're playing standby. St yeah, you're playing standby. So you literally, yeah, you're playing 8 you standby. Like... Yeah. So if you get a standby at level 0, this is, you pitch. let's say you open this, you pitch it, you grab a standby, you play it at level 0, if you have 1 or 2 in your hand. You stand this by in the back row, and then you can pitch the cards you want to stand by with a second ability without tapping it, and still use another ability. This is like you have to tap it to do the discard effect. Yeah, you have to tap it for every effect it's... on the card. And I and I still think it's bad. Where do you do that? I, no. does it say, like, right? the, the there, there's, not, there's not a two one level yeah, assist does. that does better than this. There's there's not a better card I'd put in the back row. No, you um, like a two one or something. You you stand by a three two to the back row. This is your other lane. Sometimes it depends if it's a game that's going to go long. You can, you're never losing board with this deck. Like, um, it's th it sucks because I think the power realizing the power of this card in the eight standby deck comes from seeing all the other cards and like the way the deck works. And like, you get to a point in the deck where you don't, you don't even want to stand by in the back row. You want two, three, two Asias or like one of this and one, three, two Asia. Mm -hmm. Like because you're never losing board in this deck ever. You never lose board. It's it's almost impossible for you to lose board in like more than one lane. Like it's it's impossible. So it doesn't matter what the cost is. If you need that heal, you take that heal. Mm -hmm. Like the best part um, about this card to me build, is the twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred power is massive, but well, well, that's what keeps it relevant in the mid game. The la ignore the second effect entirely. The Third effect is an end game effect that might save you the game. The first effect is what makes this a relevant, like, random trigger standby target that might just win you board the following turn. I, I think well, me and Billy started talking at the same time there, but I think he's bringing up a really good point if he wants to. Yeah, go ahead, Billy. Yeah, how many of these can you even fit in the meta build, though? I mean, like, I don't probably... see this as a three or a four of. This is, like, two tops. You probably play two, most yeah. build. Most builds run one. Yeah. Okay. They opt for two of this or one drop searcher, one of this. I think one drop searcher, one of this is more common. If you're running this as a one of, you're never sacking into it on time. Like you guys are saying, you want to be doing with it. No, if if I'm playing this, oh, I you can don't get it at zero. Myself playing it as a two of. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. This is this is. I run I run the one of two one Joker assist in P five and I I have it all the time. So I'd, whatever. You search it. You're going. You're gonna have. You can search it. I mean. Yeah, but that Joker about, you want to hit by the end of the game. You want to hit this card at the beginning of the game. Of, there's plenty of ways to do that. There's plenty of ways to do that. But not as a one of. 
This whole I'm, I'm with this, Brian, this dude. Risk. B plus. This 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 card yes. is this card is really really strong <laughs> in a slow deck. It, uh, unbelievably strong in a slow deck. Repeatable heal, dude, is way way strong. I'd maybe bu I could maybe bump it up to like a D plus because twenty five hundred power is a shitload of power, but this card's like. I, I really don't agree with you guys on this one. I think that, like... I think this card is very, um... This might be one of my more controversial opinions, but well, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't really think it, don't like this one. I don't think it's controversial based on your <laughs> background, right? It's just, like, you've played English this whole time. Only playing English. Being very, very competitive in English. Isn't think... that with which we're analyzing these cards well okay, but... this card is a this set overall and this card in general are very representative of what the slower standby focus metagame values and um i don't know that that's that's why it's a good card barring you know the art the character all the toolboxing I mean, uh, you, you never played me in Magic, Carmen. I mean, I I love love slow grindy attration decks. Well, slow controls slow. controls my ish, dude. But this is this is well, too slow, slow, too grindy, slow. even for me, dude. Slow grindy and Weiss, I think, is very different from any other card game. I love slow grindy decks and all the other card games I've played too. Uh, I like them in Hearthstone. That's like my other big, I guess, game I was more competitive in. Like, I love Handlock and stuff like that. Control Warrior. Control Warrior is probably my favorite deck ever. Like, classical Control Warrior. Um, but that's besides the point. Like, I think that slow, grindy, eight standby Weiss is, like, something that, even in our local scene, we've never experienced. And this is, like, the quintessential sort of one-of toolboxy card for that kind of deck. Repeatable heals just too good. Eight, I wouldn't deck. even consider. I wouldn't consider eight standby to be <laughs> defensive at all. I'd consider it to be super aggro. Like you're trying to get like a huge early lead. Well, maybe and then kind of capitalize on it. Maybe when it, all your targets are garbage, like in No Game No Life. I mean, I, I in general yes. though, it's like you want to sack into as much as you can as quickly as possible. No, I mean, honestly, you, you've all like, been wiped before, Carmen. You've played that eight bar fate deck and have like. <laughs> Compress super hard and then just eat shit, you know? Yeah. The longer yeah, you I draw agree. the game out, the more chances there are for you to just get fucked. Well, this gets, See, but this I, I think with this set, it, it cancels that shit. Like, playing, <laughs> like, I think Overlord standby, the Metal Bist list for Overlord standby, I wish I had you're at least one or two more constantly creating, things. you're constantly creating damage buffer. You have a constant yeah. damage buffer every single turn. And this right. says, not only am I going to damage buffer you, I'm just going to heal off every turn. I don't care about paying two stock, because I didn't lose my board. I'm not going to neg hand. Right. Like... I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get in a big argument about like standby versus whatever. I don't want to turn into fucking what is it like top yeah. tier tiers argues about standby all the time. I don't want to turn into them like standby versus like the rush meta or whatever. But I think this card is very important to like exist. It's a really toolboxy card um, for a slower game plan. So, but we we can move yeah. on. I think we. I think uh -huh. we've. I think we've discussed enough. We both brought up good points. So. Someone will identify with either side, so that's good. Uh, who's this? Is me? Yes. Yeah. All right, Sistine yeah. uh, marrying her teacher. Uh, when this card is placed on the stage from your hand, choose one of your favorite characters, bounce it, uh, gains 2k. I don't know what actually happens in Akashic Records. i just going to assume the teacher marries one of his students. Uh, so this is a bouncer that gains 2k on play. Really, really good profile <laughs> uh, in general. Um and then it also has a climax combo with a uh, pants, which is, I guess, is pretty typical for these bouncers. BD has one. A bunch of sets have one. Uh, pay two. Discard the re on reverse Rize uh, from your hand away. <laughs> Jesus. From your hand to waiting room. Sorry, guys. This uh, activates up to once per turn. When the battle opponent of this becomes reversed, if important things you don't want to lose in your climax zone, you may pay cost. If so, stand this. Three stands for pay two ditch one aggressively costed. Pretty good. Uh, I think I think yeah. it'd be better in decks that are not running the combo. Like I think as a splashable bouncer, it's better. I think oh, the yeah, climax yeah, yeah. combo is kind of like it, it plays against the first effect. Three well, standers are three standers are at their worst when you have open lanes and you're bouncing cards. 
It's a... And then you're bouncing cards, but you want to be getting reverses. I think this is pretty good. Uh, so, in terms of, like, a card in a vacuum, right? I think this is, like, you know, just real a, a good bouncer that you splash into decks. Because, like, most decks aren't blue because they're running the Sistine Rize. Because she's pretty good. Um, but in the decks where people want to play Akashic Records, it's also a finisher. So it's a card that sees play just, like, all the time. And a bouncer in, like, this sort of restand deck you might think has anti-synergy, but you can bounce buffs. You can bounce other lanes that maybe you true, like, true. Field, field garbage into. Yeah. Um, and it gains power, too, so it's going to swing in at 13 with the combo. That's, like, pretty big in general. Um, I mean, like, as a bouncer in general, it's important for every set, especially defensive sets that want to, like, grind out the games to have answers to everything, and a bouncer is the only answer to some things right now. Um, so it's important for those sets to have it. But in terms of, like, doing double duty as the Akashic Records finisher, and when this card has... This, why does this set have so many... There are so many Akashic Records cards. Um, almost as much as the Data Live cards. I expect a lot of Data Live, but not as much Akashic Records. So if you want to build the Akashic Records deck, you're just playing Book This, right? Book Pants. Ugh. Book Pants, yes. Yeah. Book Pants. Big oof. <laughs> The most frustrating climax lineup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's I I'm gonna give it an A minus. Uh do you do you value the bounce that highly? Um, I value the bounce a lot. Uh especially going into the English meta right now, where we have like unrestricted fate basically running around. Um yeah. But more so I overall, mean, the fact that for the set, it is also, like, a viable finisher. Like, 2-1, like, pay to pitch one restand is, like, the most aggressively costed restand around. Yeah, it's pretty good. As much as I dislike them, like, you know. Hmm. Otherwise, it'd be getting, like, a B-plus because it's a bouncer. I mean, you said it earlier. It's, if you just play it to bounce something, you bounce the buffs, and then the whole the, everything else falls apart, usually, so... You know, it is what it is. The, the bouncing is just too good. Unless, you know, especially if they just paid out their stock for their finisher and have one stock and you're just putting them back in their hand. You might not kill them that turn, but it's like, whatever. Bouncer good. Unga bunga. Like, I, kind of, I kind of agree with what Carmen said about, like, bouncers being really, really well positioned right now. Mm -hmm. And that gives it a B for me. Because it's like a splashable card. But it gets the plus because... If bouncers are really good and you just want an excuse to be able to run four bouncers, this Here's is an actual finisher combo, too. Yeah. Right, you can just play the combo. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, that sounds kind of silly, but I mean, if you're if you're teching really hard for a meta where you want a lot of bounces, then it's a really good excuse to just run four copies of this card and right. get it every time. And you're you're already playing the on death Rize because it's a broken card. Oh, not bro. Oh, is that the one really combos yeah. yeah, you ditched the oh, Horus okay. Rize, yeah. That okay, was a, not, that was not, a big reason for the A minus, yeah. Yeah, not not broken in a deck where you're playing this combo per se, but strong card. Unga bunga remove card good. That's that's it. <laughs> and it's in blue, you're already splashing blue. Like the like the fact that it color fixes itself with an already good card. That's pretty good. You don't have to stretch to like play a weird color to play your bouncer. All right, let's move on. Oh, this fucking show got a card. Let's fucking go. Sweet. Let's. This show is. Oof. What show is this? Fucking uh. Enlighten me. Fucking. What is it called again? <laughs> <laughs> she has the giant gun. Um, oh, okay. No, the <laughs> that, All right. that explains a Billy, lot. <laughs> Billy, Billy, read the card. I will look it up. Okay. So whenever this card is placed on stage from your hand, uh, you may pay the cost, which is pay two. If you do, choose one Bunko character or Magic character, and then salvage that from your waiting room. Um, second effect is when this card becomes reversed, reveal the top card of your deck. If that is a character card that is level zero or lower, you can add it to your hand. If not, return it to the original position. It's Ooh. Chaika. It's Chaika. Chaika the Coffin Princess. This show is fucking lit. Everybody go watch this. It's on every streaming <laughs> service. It's like the most fun uh, fucking D&D &D campaign you'll ever watch drunk. Uh, that's it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. What does this card do? <laughs> no, it's fine. Go ahead. I'm, I'm joking. 
it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty good. solid. I don't know how uh, much space it has in the right, standby yeah. build. Uh, I mean, it'll let you grab a Climax. So it's like a reverse coin flip. Uh, that also has a pay two plus. Yeah, on on play, pay two plus on reverse, maybe plus again. That seems level zero or lower character is important. That's uh yeah. less than yeah. thirty. That's a thirty to forty percent oh, chance. Oh, lower character. I didn't see the character board. Thirty, 30 the card, to the card's a lot yeah. better in um non standby decks. I don't think you ever run this in a standby deck. No, no, no. no. I mean, even if in you're a not playing standby and you're playing a heavy zero lineup. Even then, Andy, even with like 18 to 20 zeros, it's a um, between a 30 and 40% chance to pop back the hand. That's not worth running. I don't think. No, I hate the card. I think it sucks, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying like. It is better, right? It, it goes from 25%. If you're playing like a. To... If you're in a, you know, a metagame where you want to be running like 20 plus zeros and you want to be, you know, <laughs> you know. If, if if you it's try if you, if you try field it. early, it generates enough a lot of stock for you to use the the two ability, and then you have more zeros oh. to plus your hand. I think in like really aggressive like twenty plus zero deck, it could be all right. But it's it's got. I don't, I don't think we're in that meta. It's got utility. That's all that matters. Yeah, it's like a. No, it's not even a C minus. It's not that good. I don't know. The only reason I brought up the whole like meta thing, like if you're in like a meta that favors that, I don't know. I remember like when I first like got into this game, I was like scouring the Facebook pages and shit. This was back in the time when I thought like running twenty zeros was a good thing. And I remember seeing like people posting about like, oh yeah, like in my community, like out in California, we run twenty two zeros. What the fuck? And that's the that's the meta out here. And I, mean, I guess, yeah. That's been the you know, for California for every game for the last 20 years. <laughs> what, <laughs> running, running like a crazy early game? Yeah, yeah, it's it's the dumbest shit in the world. They did the same thing in Naruto and basically every other card game where there's, like, a turn-based mechanic. Well, I mean, we saw it, we saw it at... That's uh, a really at interesting Spring point, yeah. We saw it at Springfest and White Plains, how many people were trying to stay level zero the whole time. Do you remember that? Well, I mean, you should try to stay at level zero most of the time, like, Getting extra level zero turns is really I'm good, but that, I'm that in, doesn't. I meant try fielding. This oh, way. oh, you mean eagle screeching? <laughs> you mean you mean the, the bombs bursting in air and the climax and the all three characters, well, the three so levels, the the three level zeros in the blue climax. But that was that was just Paul. Paul was the only person doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think a lot of people in English do that. You you, you know what I've heard too, like. In, in other card games, too, like about Magic or just like any any card game, it's like the Japanese players tend to be a lot more like... Methodical. Slower and grindier. And, and about like that standby game, that's probably why they favor it. Where in America, it's just like, all right, how do I break how the do format I kill and you? win on turn three? Yeah. Like how, like, how do I go as fast as possible and push your shit in? As opposed to, let's sit here and play... A fair, honest game better than my opponent. I don't know. I love. So that th this is a card for Americans. Yeah, we only play. Real, we only play real this, America. Th think, th this this lolly's got a big gun just for America, and it's in a coffin because <laughs> she kills you. Uh, One important thing, though, her eyebrows are fucking bushy, like rock. Oh level. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got that fucking. She got them bushy brows, dude. Well, it, it's... Dude, do you see a mirror anywhere? She, there? Dude, she you should a see. Coffin. The... You should see sure. the anime art. The anime art looks nothing like this, and you should see those fucking eyebrows. They're thick AF. Thick <laughs> that's, AF That's eyebrows. what I googled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody watch Chaika on Crunchyroll now. Uh, next Great. card. Yeah, please. Um, Who's got this card? Well, it's me. All right, you got Bondage uh, Twins. Great. That's what I like. What I'm waiting for. Maybe a little older, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all of your characters win. And... <laughs> <laughs> Fantasia Bunko <laughs> or Spirit get 500 power. So, uh, and then it has an auto ability when it's placed on the stage from your hand. Look at the top card of your library and put it on top of your bottom. There is your back row plus. There is your back row scry for your standby. Have fun. 
or anything actually. Look for anything. I don't know. I think this card sucks. I don't Scry think is fine. Scry is great. I mean, Global it's Five just... is it's it's fine. Nice. It's oh it's nice. no, dude, D plus, dude, D plus. The, the the Scries have to be more aggressive. They have to be cards that can swing. I'd never swing with this card. This this card can swing though. It's yeah, it, it every every card is capable of swinging unless exactly. it's an event. Bingo. The fact that, the not, fact not, that, not, that not four events though. I'm giving it a C. Cause the fact that like you want to be seeing 500 back row cards early, like 500 back row assists early, means you'd want to run a lot of it. But the fact that it scries means even later in the game it's good. So I think as far as a back row 500 goes, I think it's actually really really good if you know that's what you're looking for, because you can run a lot of copies so you can see it early and then still retain the value later. I guess it only retains so if, value. If you value a level zero global five, I think it's pretty solid. If you have I mean, a, um, I think, I think a, I'd agree with Drew on this one. I think I could give it a C. If you I have an end game, if, like an end game strategy that relies on top deck manipulation, maybe. Also, in these blue decks that require you to rest two cards in your back row. Bingo. I was just gonna say that. I was yeah. just gonna say that. You the, you don't lose out on any other effect by resting this card, which is nice. That that is true. I what feel like the reason like, names, global right? fives don't get played a lot, like they don't see a lot of play, is just because you know they kind of suck later in the game. I can't remember the twins' names. They like never did anything after their original arc that was important, except take each other's place. Wow, I can't remember their names. Okay, Lindsay Lohan. Whatever. Are are we done with this scryer? Yeah, let's please, go. Let's please. Go All right. Uh, who is this? This is Andy. Andy. Fifteen cards. This left. is the uh, the teacher, the teacher who marries his students, I think. When he's placed on your hand, when he's play fuck. When he's placed <laughs> on the stage from your hand, I, dude. Every time I get one of these cards, I mess it up. <laughs> uh, when you play him from your hand to the field, choose one of your Fantasia, Bonko, or Magic characters. Give it fifteen. Um. When he becomes reversed in battle, your opponent can draw a card. If you're so, your opponent discards a oh, card. Oh, yeah, wow, I hate it now. F, nope. yeah. Bad, horrible. F. I, yeah. I love giving hey, my dude. opponents uh, something to do. Climax filter. Here you go. You drew four, but here you go. Just the first. Right. The first effect's really solid, and he's a beefy body. But is, is giving our... your opponent free draw discard is like the worst thing you can do. Is this our first unanimous F ever, like, or in, in the set? set? In the set, yeah. In, I in think, the set, yeah. for sure, yeah. Yeah, I think this is our first unanimous. I mean, that's saying something. We've gone through two two colors in a trial deck. Well, I think <laughs> so. it's I think it's important to like look at why though, like yeah. why that second effect is so bad. Letting your opponent filter. I, I was so touching terrible. on it a little bit. Yeah, like letting your opponent filter lets them get out of a situation they would otherwise have no out for. Right. Versus a card that also did almost nothing. For you, for you not to suffer the drawback of this, you would have to play over it, which means you're minusing. Yeah. yeah. Which negates the plus you're getting from the maybe 1500 power earlier. Yeah. yeah letting letting your opponent work or letting your opponent filter is not worth the uh, no Anything. the minimal the minimal power buff you get off this card. Right. All right. Let's get rolling through these comments here. Next. All one. right. We've got uh, Shido, the girl's savior. <laughs> that he uh, when... is. When this is placed form hand to the stage, this gets plus X power for the turn. X is equal to 500 times the number. I got of you, the... Hotsey. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> 500 times the number of your Fantasia Bunko character. Uh, when this is placed on your hand, or on your hand. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, you can rest two characters, or return two characters from your waiting room to your deck, and he can side attack without soul penalty for the turn. So he does. <sighs> The so thing. The, Which only, one's the only blue on a text search climax combo is the near unplayable um what Shimakaze combo. The Shimakaze <laughs> at 65. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with Andy. Like this is a bad striker because yeah. it doesn't even go to seven. Um the oh, other God, effect is one. super yeah. Talk about handing your opponent a reverse on a silver platter. Yeah, yeah I can side nice. attack for free. Which why would I do that when I'm getting a bunch of extra power? And you just and then on your turn yourself. it's going to be super well, weak and you're going to run what it sets over. This from? What sets this from? Uh, data life. This is data life. So this would make sure that the top end two that two of those top ends are actually in your deck to search for. 
Oh, for the Karumi deck. Oh, okay, okay, F, hold on. F, F plus, I'd never play it anyway. This card is only Fantasia Bunko Trait, though, so it's not on Trait for Data Life cards. It's not Okay, trait, that's right? not Oh, asking. wait, is Shido Trait? Why is Shido Traitless? That's so <laughs> dumb. Why would Shido he's... be Traitless? There's nothing in the show that makes him Traitless, right? He's, he's not a spirit. Okay, he's not a spirit. What's his trait? Is his trait his Fantasia Bunko? His Fantasia Bunko. Trait's yeah. Fantasia Bunko. Yeah, so you can still, you so can wait, still this, is un, this is unplayable in a set... In a deck that's supported by actual data live cards, that's that's still an F. That makes it even worse. Yeah, you you can't play it in a deck where the Karumi finisher would be good. So fuck it. It's terrible. I don't know. I think that's a really Just good point you brought up. I think the fact Just that you think. can pop them well, back. Well, no, you bad. can't. You you can't though. It the Karumi within this set, I don't think will be as powerful as it would be as a finisher in the actual data live set. No, I get that, but I'm saying that's why it's. I mean, it's in this set. You can do that with it in within this set. I'm not. I. I you don't can't know. review cards we haven't seen yet. I guess. I. I. I don't think that makes it any better. I'm not saying it's great. I'm still giving it an F because it F for fucking sucks. But if you, you know, you don't have to worry about the first ability or getting it reversed if you're just playing it specifically for free to put two of her back in your deck to try field it. That's why. That's why I'm giving it the D, because um. He's got that. He's got that fucking. Look at that tie, dude. That is the longest tie ever. Yeah, I'm giving him the D because of that tie. You know. Look at that shit. How do you get a tie? It's like, how are you that much of a manlet that your tie is that fucking? You know what? Never mind. Next card. Um, we got this origami. <laughs> when you attack with the book, she gets popped back. That's it. At least what? it's on attack. I, I guess. Uh, it's technically a plus one. Book technically pluses. Look at that sick climax, though. Uh, oh C minus, yeah, almost not. a D plus. C pseudo plus two if you deny their combo. I guess. <laughs> but like, you have to hit one first. Kind of sucks. I'm pretty sure this is Off the only. Book. This is the only level one for Data Life. Feels wow. bad. Well, they're getting their own set, so they didn't lose too hard. It's, it's got origami on it, though. Like, you know, yeah, the arts nice. could could be worse. Yeah. I like I like Origami. She's not my best, but I like Origami. All right, next card. Oh, who the right. fuck is this? <laughs> it's a. I think that's, I think that's Katori from. No, it's F K M. So I don't know what K M is. Might be a one-off card. Brian is searching. I hear it. <laughs> oh, is this, this, her, her name is Misora. Magical Swordsman's Egg. All right. Is that the anime? Anyway. So, oh. this card can't side attack. For each marker under this card, it gets 1,500 power. Um, when this card would become reversed, you can place one card from your hand to the waiting room if you pay the cost. Uh, you can look at the top card of your deck and place it under as a face-down marker and rest this card. Mm. So, you pay one to play it, and then every time it dies, you pay one and play it again basically to make it 1500 power stronger the thing i've always hated about these type of cards is you look at the top card you can't if it's a climax you can't choose to keep it on top you know what i mean like you have yeah yeah it. yeah i drew knows all about that right shut up Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> He markered like three climaxes in a row with us. Five. Alesia. Five. <laughs> Jesus. Five. I only saw three. <laughs> I had a I had a thirteen card deck. Five of the climaxes went into Strelazia. Or ended up five underneath Strelazia, thirteen in like two. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure this is all completely unplayable. I'll give it an S plus. I I don't think I don't think it's playable. If it wasn't if it wasn't pay one to pitch the card, it'd be fine. No, it's D minus because it's spicy. I mean, what is it? The best. It is spicy. The, the best iteration of these marker steamroller cards are like Laharl and uh, what is it, Karen? And yeah, Karen, I'm a real yeah. big fan of the Karen one. Yeah, it's like Laharl is probably the best one, honestly, because he's a zero. He can start farming early. Um, oh, any any card this, like this where you're able to choose your markers is no, immediately the, better. The, yeah. The best one, Carmen. The Evangelion level zero. Okay, never mind. Moving on. Uh. <laughs> All right, we got this Ahigal double piece. Uh, who has this? Oh, uh, Zerudas. All right, yeah, that's that character's <sighs> name, by the way. I was just 
confused because never mind. When this is placed from the hand to the stage, all players reveal the top card of the library. The level of your card revealed this way is equal to or higher than the level of the card revealed by your opponent. You may choose up to one of your opponent's level two or lower characters and put it in the waiting room. Uh, unplayable. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> double, double, triple F. <laughs> Be awesome in standby. It's spicy. It's spicy as fucking it's, it's standby. The, the only good part about this card is the art. The art the is so nice, funny. Yeah. What's what's so bad about it? There's not like a ton of ways to kill a level two card in your opponent's back row. Andy, it's there's a there's two, ton there's tons of ways to. It's huh? a two one five hundred. That's fine. You're killing off a card in their back row. Maybe. Maybe there's there really isn't a lot of ways to kill level two or higher's in back. I, I there's would a lot of ways to kill level one or lowers, but the two I, or higher's. I would rather neg their front row to neg their hand, like kill their front row to neg their hand, than even attempt to play this card. I'm gonna give it another F. That's a quad F. <laughs> that's, I, th I think if you want a way to hit back row, that's like a real decent option, actually. If I, I, I think if I pulled Andy, this card, well, real decent, I, real decent's a strong word. It's like yeah, a playable okay. option. I'm, I'm consumer, with you on it, Andy, but I don't think it's a real decent option. I think it's playable if you want a way to hit a back row. As a consumer, if I opened this card and if it was anything other than a common, I would march myself to Bushi Road headquarters and demand a refund. Bullshit. That's too much of a pussy. You'd never do it. This card's fucking terrible. Like. I just paid for this art. I can get this art on the internet. Like, <laughs> oh my god! But uh, you can't. You can't look at it in public, though. You can look at this in public. At you, you yeah, can't look your at local White Schwartz tournament. No, you can't. Yeah, look at the next card and tell me you want to look at it in public. This is fucking stupid. All right. Yeah. Next card. The most powerful backup. Yeah, I'd look at this in public. Yeah. It's a yeah, girl. I open wrong. My, she's, I, she's getting I, a. She's getting a breast exam. You know, she's practicing uh, good. I, everybody. I open, breast cancer. Everybody. Surgery. Everybody who buys this set and pulls this card is now viable to being searched by the cops and being under arrest for fucking owning child porn. I. What type of child has? <laughs> I... <laughs> Come on, dude. Dude, I open my Twitter in public. Okay, like you know, this is nothing compared to that. This is the best comment I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know what it does. Just based on the it's, art alone. It's a two one three five. It's a double D out. for me. Uh, mm -hmm. a three one five, a three five backup in an in a standby deck where you're holding field, I guess has more value. That seems okay. Yeah. It has like the strongest art. I don't want to rate it too highly. I'm gonna give it a C plus. I'm gonna give it a C. Uh, yeah. Just because like in standby, maybe you run one of these. The art is like fuck. This is like triple S tier art. Can you open maybe. like a? I hope this is like a triple rare. You know what I mean? Like maybe you can open an SR of this uh, or something. Is there? Can somebody check Yute? You take Fujimi for this, Brian. It's all you. <laughs> I hear the working, keyboard clacking away. Work, work, working on it. <laughs> yeah, but um, man, if yeah. they have a if they have an SR for this, like major props to them. I mean, this sends your what is it? Your eleven five before any back row supports to fourteen. It's sent. Wait, eleven five? Yeah, you're right. Uh, fifteen. Yeah, I can't. No, not, not, not of this card. No, not of this card. Okay. No, I don't so think, it sends I don't your. I don't think commons usually have higher rarity versions. 2-2 two, two with no support to 15 with Osseo support, 17. Pretty gross. In terms hey, well, of when, you, when you guys are cracking your packs after locals, like, any extra copies of this you have, throw them to me. I'm going to I'm gonna make a not. binder, and I'm going to fill it only with this card. <laughs> Absolutely not. I want to make the binder of this card. So um, I thought of it first. I said it first. You, don't, you didn't even watch the show, dude. What are these characters' names? I don't even know. I don't even know what shows it from. It doesn't matter. Oh my god, fuck you. Okay, next. Uh, who was supposed to have the last card? They can do this uh, card. I think, I think Andy was. Okay. I so thought Andy, I... I don't know. Andy, Am I? You, can, you can have this, girl. You. Oh, I get her too? Oh, lucky me. Experience. Some of level cards in your levels under three or higher, she gets hand on core. And when she gets reversed, if the level... If, um, oh. if they're higher level, you can bottom deck it. So it's a bottom decker with hand change encore. with hand on core. That's pretty uh that interesting. So good. That's fine. Uh, so okay. well, that's kind of awkward because if you're running this into something and then hand on coring yeah. it, they're just gonna run it over on the way back. It just dies again, yeah. So yeah, so I've I've been playing what is it? I've been playing the two one scene on in the new Sal set. That's the two one that it's just an early play killer. 
like a 13-5, and then it has hand on core. That's a lot better because you ditch ditch one for it to come back, and you can kill your other your opponent's other early play. This one you'd have to ditch two because they'd kill it with something else because it's just a six k. Um, yeah, and then so you'd have to ditch two to kill another level three or another early play. It's not even a level three, and it has an experience requirement. Ugh. So D plus, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very deceptive. Like at first glance, yeah. you think, "Wow, that's great," but then it's like, no. Well, I don't Discarding know. We, we, don't have, we don't have to think about the other effect. Right. Uh, it's fine. Uh, as, it's fine as an anti-change bomb. Yeah, it's fine. Just, just to remove. Oh, the, I don't know. You, you have to have experience, though. It's like no, you're jumping through this for, extra hurdle. Not for the anti. Not, not for, for the, the second effect. Not for the second effect. As just a way to kill you, it's it's playable. True. True. If you're in blue and you need a way to kill you, this is. Uh, I'm giving it a minus so the people know. <laughs> All right. And the people will know. All right, so here's the event. All right, we have uh, Love of the Devil. <laughs> this is cool. Uh, two zero counter event. Uh, choose a trait on a character on your opponent's stage, and for that turn, all of your opponent's characters lose that trait. The only way to turn off the 2k from Armin is he only buffs core characters. Ooh. I think. Let's double check that. That's, that's, really, that's really good, then. Yeah, I, or is I it, like or because you can use it on your turn too. Or is it just frontal two K? I don't know. Um, I think it's frontal to core characters, is it not? Attack on Titan volume? No, not volume two. Volume one. Yeah, you think your card that good would be printed in current day? All of your core characters in front of this get two K power. Yeah, yeah, so you could choose core, and then uh, all the two K would go away. Now, is this, like, secretly a broken card in the JP meta? It is. Or does a, it see zero play? It is a really, really spicy card that people continue. So, okay. So, this is the same level of quote-unquote broken as those 1-0 events that refresh both of your decks. Um, where it either just, like, completely wins you the game out of nowhere. Or just does fucking nothing. And you cut it. So, you know, it's super, super spicy. Here, here's my thought on it. It's like, yeah, it's either useless or it's insanely good. But the thing that makes it, the nice thing about it, like, it's two cost, it's zero cost, right? It has a little fist there, that cute little fist. You can play it on your turn or their turn. So you can use it to, like, ensure your combo goes through against Armin or, like, to throw off their combo. Because there's, there's some combos that require, like, certain traits or like buff well, power only to stuff with traits or whatever to my knowledge we don't have this in english yet right no, no it, it this does, type of profile is like completely uh, unique yeah it doesn't hard, doesn't yeah. exist anywhere else it's hard to even judge this because of the way well the aqua does it wording. aqua does it uh yeah no, but that's like off a combo i think no she she gets rid of the trait for the character for the, for the deck in the deck yeah And this is also an event card, and you can have access to your event cards with the uh, that first card we looked at, one of the yeah, very the first room, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard but to judge. I, it's, it's I, I really don't right? know how to evaluate it. It's either broken or it sucks. Yeah, I'm just. But I guess give the nice it... thing is you you can run it as a one or two of and fish it out with the uh, Rumia. I'm gonna give it a spicy rating. Like it's it's either super good or super terrible. Uh, it's really crazy against AOT to turn off Armin. Like, um, that's really nuts. I think it, I think there's a lot of a lot of hidden potential here. You know. Yeah, maybe it is just a C, right? Like C, C plus, right? In all seriousness, that is that is what I was thinking. I don't think I can give it anything more. Something in the middle of the road at this point. Yeah, not at this point. It has strong art too. This Toka art's pretty good. Sunset Hard Hands. We love Hard Hands. Big C. Big right. C. <laughs> if this uh, card's not broken now, give it a couple years and it will be. Alright, so we got the teacher from Akashic Records again. Uh assist he's got a shield up, or is that a flag? I don't know. Um choose one card from your hand, put it in the waiting room. If so, choose one of your opponents level three or lower front row characters. Put it at the bottom of your library, then put this at the bottom of your library. <laughs> Excuse me? 
So you uh, pay one, ditch one, nuke your opponent's level three, put this at the bottom of your deck. Gets rid of Futaba. I guess. I, yeah. Is this this is objectively worse than the Sistine bounce in its own color? Gets rid of. I mean, gets you, don't rid of you don't get to devote a lane. You don't get to devote a lane. It's an event, room. Drew. You got it. You got. Oh, it's an event. So Never mind. You got to run at least two of this card. I'd rather run two Sistine. You can do this at level two. This is a two-one. The fact that you can anti-change them at level two with this is really. But there's a two-one bomb in the same color. Potentially playable. No, nah, if I'm playing this card, I'm running four. Yeah. If I'm playing this card, I am meme. I am memeing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is a meme. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. F R A, F R A. The bomb is also an Akashic Records card. Never mind. Unplayable. Um, I'd play the bomb <laughs> ten out of ten times over this. Uh, it's not unplayable. It's like D D. Being being able to bottom deck this isn't necessarily bad either, because then you can yeah, like you, you can deck. use the Rumia and draw into it again. Or... I mean, yourself farther from a refresh point. That's way too spicy. You may you. choose one card in your hand and move it to the way. To... Oh wait, you have to. If so. If so. Yeah. Okay. I guess you can just get it out of your hand if you really want. I guess the the biggest benefit of this is it is it is removal at level two. Yeah. It, it As stops... is the bomb. Right, but if it, if you're playing against, say priestess, you can remove the priestess prior to having your souls nagged away. Ah. Mm. Good point, good point. That gives it the D plus, I guess. Mm. I'm like almost at the C range with Brian, but I think I still gotta be in like the D tier somewhere. But I think it's definitely like it's worth considering. Not spicy. And All I right. love it. Alright, guys, real <laughs> quick. Promos. Rapid fire. Here we go. This thing, this one oh, promo. Uh, what every, do you think? Every, all the cards get a C. Uh, uh five. Your, it's a this six. Is, only is, during your turn, card sucks. During your turn. But it has a gun, D. Yeah, D, <laughs> D, D plus for gun. D plus G for gun. D. I like Damn, she's got a gun. Area. All right. Uh, next. Uh, Fumofu card. Bear from the hood. S plus. <laughs> S plus for full metal panic cards. Um, it, it's it's only for Jamie Trey. This is the worst card I've seen in my life. <laughs> it's quite terrible. Can't side yeah, attack it's all your best. other. Yeah, yeah it's, it's bad. bad. I don't think as D D D. Yeah. D. Next, uh, oh, Alma Burry cards. No, this card is even worse. It this card's even worse. Hours. Oh God. It can only attack last. Um, nope. F. No, the D minus because has mill. Basically an oversize. It F can only attack F last. Next. Uh, naked lollies. A. Oh, it's uh, a brainstorm. Wait, brainstorm. wait, wait. It's, a, it's a draw two, ditch one brainstorm. And it has act. Wait, this has act plus 1k. It's a level one brainstorm. But like... Green. It might be okay. Maybe it is this green. Is, maybe this is fine. Uh, this B. Is... B. Got this is our, it's a B brainstorm. For brainstorm. Yeah. Is, uh, there. Yeah. B, minus, B, B minus for level one. Minus yeah. for being level one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Draw two ditch oh, ones really? are really really good in standby. They are. Nah, they have a but the, the the other brainstorm. But is it's combo. it's green, so you need to have other green cards to even play yeah, it. Yeah. There's there's the or green you cards. Still, you are, just stand by it out. The green cards are hella sandboxed. All right. Hey, it's a it's a good profile though. <laughs> Uh, this 3-2 Rios, which has, uh, on play reveal top, if it's a character, deal one. And then, uh, pay one, your opponent can't use Encore for the turn. Yeah, I, like I, knew, I knew, I knew Billy's vote. Yeah, my ratings there, we're done. Move on, guys. I like this. It's an uninteractable <laughs> burn one. You can't interact this with is, the burn one, I love this it. Is a, this is a splashable level three. It's fine, yeah, I think it's... Uh, the, the second on... effect's pretty useless, but the first effect. Yeah, I, I'll give it a B, it. a B, straight B. Until like like you reveal a climax twice. So we'll... Next card. Oh, we got Kaide from Abuda. Wait, is this in Modose? No, 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 no. This isn't in Modose. She just looks like the character from Modose. This is this also my. Stupid. This is also my sister, Rider Rider. Yeah, this is unplayable, right? 
Uh, yeah, oh, it's more playable than uh, the other coin flip we saw earlier. What do you mean? It is oh, a... then the Chica be... coin flip? Slightly. It's, it's like a D plus. Yeah, it's... I'm going to give it a D. Two, two or higher is... is... Yeah, two, two, two or higher is also like 30 to 40%. It's bad. Nor normal level zero coin flips are like between 45 and 55. Why they're good. Yeah, you know, it's not good, but you know... Yeah, it, it's better. Uh, next, Akashic Records. Uh, what is this? On play, ditch a card. If so, reveal top. If it is a... Choose level. Oh, wait. Is this is this Liz on play? Or Rico on play? This is Rico on play. Rico on play? Um, as a level... Level one. level one. No. Let's you top check. Does anything else let you top check? There's plenty of things. I don't know. It's still pretty bad. It. Yeah, just straight D. But then you have to add it. Have to. Why does the set have so many promos? I don't know. Because there are so many series. No, you add the card from your waiting room, Drew. Oh. You reveal top card and then add something from waiting oh, room. Yeah, okay. it's like resting Rico from bad. Love Live Sunshine. That's not that bad. All right, last card and the only relevant Yo. one. All right, so <laughs> this is uh, the Data Lab Maids. We got Origami and uh, Karumi. When it's placed on the stage, you get to heal. This ability actuates up to one per turn. At <laughs> pay the end of five, this, pitch two, resand. Pay five, pitch two, resand, climax list. Uh, As a splashable, one of... Yeah, like, you look at the cost, and you're like, that's garbage. However... Still at, it's at the very end, after everything's all said and done. That'd be really nice to play alongside the, uh... The... Fuck, what's your name? Clock... Kermit's... The Kermi finisher. Yeah, this is like a one of, right? It's like a if I need to push for game card, right? I, I think it fulfills a similar, a lessened but similar role to like the caster in Fate Stay Night that's like pay four, ditch two, free stand. But this doesn't even need reverse. That's why it's pay five. Right. Instead of hey, hey, the floor, the floor on it is a two soul uh, healer, which is two soul healer. Yeah. Sometimes right. all that matters anyway. Which is fine, which is this fine, card's actually yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, yeah B I'm minus. You, B minus, yeah. I'm with you on that, bro. That's pretty damn good. Rating rate. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for blue and promos. Uh, we'll be back with red after that. Anybody got anything else? Are we done? I'm going to bed. This yeah. is two hours long. Yes. Good night. Too Good many night. cards. Later. Yeah, too too many Later. blue cards. I did not expect this. So, all right. Yeah, we'll be back yeah, with red, was... guys.